Hey guys, it's your favorite medical diva, that clinical instructor, and today I'm going to give you the secret to passing your clinical exams. So no matter what clinical class you're taking, whether it be nursing, medical assisting, phlebotomy, EKG, um, certified nurse's aide, patient care technician, whatever it is, you're going to have clinical exams that you're going to have to take at the end. Everybody gets very daunted by those. It can be kind of scary, but I'm going to teach you how to pass them every time. If you've ever been my classroom student, you know that I have never had a student fail their clinical boards even one time. And it's not because I'm the best instructor in the whole wide world or because I have the smartest students in the whole wide world, which I do, but it's because I teach my students how they learn. So I'm going to give you some tips how to pass the first time every time. First of all, anything clinical is challenging and it involves a lot of work. It's a commitment you need to be willing to make. So if you're gonna do it, you have to study outside the classroom. There is no way to get around that. You absolutely have to study. You can't just go to class and sit there and listen to the instructor and take notes and not look at them outside of class. When I was in nursing school, I didn't watch TV or listen to the radio for like two years. Anytime I would be listening to the radio in the car during my commutes, work to school, school to, you know, home, home to school, I would listen to NCLEX review tapes. I would listen to my instructor's lectures over and over again, and it really helped me get the information in. Um, when I would be watching TV, you know, in times that I would normally be doing that, I would be studying or, again, listening to tapes, listening to lectures. So you have to be willing to put the, the work in outside the classroom. Do not consult Dr. Google for everything. Your instructor is likely gonna give you everything that you need to pass your exam. Um, I tell my students this all the time, especially with things like phlebotomy. Phlebotomy, the two colors, the order of the draw, the additives are different in different countries. And I found that out the hard way when I had a student uh, in my class who had already taken the class in, in uh, Great Britain and then took it here. And she was like, oh my God, it's so different there. So the internet will not always give you the right information for what you need to pass your boards here. The internet also contains a lot of false information. And if you take on too much extra information, it's gonna boggle your brain down it's too much to remember all at once, and that's how students fail exams. So don't always consult Dr. Google. Make friends with your classmates. Get together outside of the classroom, outside of school, and form study groups. This was a big thing we did in nursing school, too. Um, we would go to the local Barnes & Nobles, drink coffee, and sit and look at the books. And you can even take books out and sit and read them while you're in big bookstores like Barnes & Nobles. So get together with your classmates. Uh, figure out how you learn. When I teach in the classroom, I give my students several different types of media to learn from. I lecture, I play videos, we play games, I give out handouts. I give them every opportunity that I can for them to learn and really soak in the information so that way they pass their exams every time and you know they feel like they have a good handle on the, uh, the information. If you're taking an NHA exam, so again, medical assisting, EKG tech, phlebotomy technician, patient care technician, medical billing and coding, it's worth it to go to the NHA Now website and buy their study guide. Well worth it. It's, it comes to like, I don't know, $41 and change, but you get six attempts at the study guide. And here's a little tip, guys. A whole bunch of the questions that are on this, the practice tests are actually on the exam itself. Shh, you want that. Okay, but outside of NHA, if you're going to take a clinical exam, oh, and this goes for EMT as well, guys, you need to read the question carefully, okay? Take your time and read the question. Look specifically for words like not and accept. If you read the question too fast and you miss words like that, you get the meaning of the, the uh, question very wrong and voila, you get it wrong. So take your time and read the question carefully. But don't overthink the question. Don't second guess yourself. A lot of times you'll have questions that give you like 10 pieces of information and you only need one piece of that information. If the question seems like it's it's really, really daunting and there's a lot of information, take a step back, look at it and say, okay, what is this question really asking here? That'll help. 
Questions and answers nowadays on any clinical exam are not straightforward. It's not like, here's the question, there's four answers, and one is very obviously right. It's not that way anymore, and it hasn't been for quite a while, guys. It's more like there are two right answers. Which one is the best? Which one is more right? Or all four answers are awful and wrong. Which one is the least ridiculous? Uh, or maybe this one answer that might be right isn't really a great answer, but the other three answers are something dangerous, or that would make you go, oh my God, no, that can't be the answer. So the reason is because passing your boards nowadays isn't just about knowing the information. It's also about showing the board that you have developed problem solving and critical thinking skills. That stuff is just as important in any field of medicine. When you go in for your exam, usually you'll either be supplied with or can bring in a blank sheet of paper and a pencil. Here's what you're going to do with that. When you go to a question, you're going to read it. If you have absolutely no idea, you're going to make a quick guess, select something. You're going to write down the number of the question and you're going to go on to the next one. If you sit and mill and think and obsess about one question, that's how you waste your time because I promise you there will be a whole bunch that you're really unsure of, but your time is going to run out really fast if you don't make sure that you, you keep moving on. So even if you do end up running out of time at the end and you don't have time to go back. Most of them let you go back, by the way, guys. Even if you ran out of time, well, at least you got the other questions answered and with picking one and guessing, you still have a 25% shot of getting it right. And you'd be surprised that your guesses are usually right. Um, but I find my students always have time to go back and look at those questions. But you'll psych yourself out if you waste a ton of time on a question that you really don't know the answer to because trust me, there'll be plenty more that you do know the answer to. If you go back to those questions and you really still have absolutely no idea, start by ruling out two answers. There will usually be two that you're like, okay, it can't be these two. Then at least you only have two left and you got a 50-50 shot of guessing it right. If you have a question where there's an answer that you have never heard of, you're like, I don't even know what that 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 choice is. That's not the answer, okay? They'll sometimes even make stuff up uh, to kind of throw you off that, that, oh, wow, that sounds important. That sounds like it can't be it. But if you've never heard this, if your instructor has never said it, if, if another clinician has never said it to you, it's not the right answer. They're trying to trip you up a little bit there. So like I said before, passing your boards isn't all about memorizing information. It's about having problem solving and critical thinking skills. And those are so important, whether you go into nursing, you know, EMS and paramedicine, medical assisting, whatever it is, those things are important. So that's it, guys. That's all there is to being a fantastic student. A lot of people are not good test takers. I, I hear people say that constantly, but TCI, I am not a good test taker. That's okay. You don't necessarily have to have that gift of, you know, being an awesome test taker. If you do, great, good for you, but not everybody is. But you can become a really good test taker by following those tips. Um, anyway, guys, that's all there is to it. If you have any questions, please just leave a comment. I'll be happy to answer it for you. Um, check out my Twitter account, That Clinical Instructor, uh, my Facebook page, hashtag That Clinical Instructor. Uh, Allied Health Tutoring and Study, and give my channel a subscribe for more great clinical instruction videos and tips. Dream big, guys. Thanks.